from Hydrograph Clean Power Inc. Trades on the OTCQB under the symbol HGRAF and on the CSE under the symbol HG. It's a leading producer of pristine graphene using an explosion synthesis process, which allows for exceptional purity, low energy use, and identical batches. Welcoming President and CEO Kirsten Brewer. Welcome back, Kirsten. Happy to hear your update whenever you're ready. Sure, and thanks for having me. Um, so I feel that, and again, to, to briefly um, go over the company, as mentioned, we have a patented explosion synthesis process, which is quite as it sounds. We effectively pump into steel chambers acetylene and oxygen. We ignite that gaseous mixture with sparks from an electrode. It destabilizes the molecules, and then we're able to convert the carbon that was in the gas into pristine graphene. Our exhaust is then syngas, as the oxygen and hydrogen have to go somewhere. That is a commodity gas that at scale we will arrange an offtake agreement for. Um, for the most part, my update is on production, as we have recently announced an LOI with a very large uh, North American gas uh, provider. We're extremely about, excited about this internally. Um, we have been able to announce that the location will be within Texas. Uh, more details will be provided soon. So we have signed the LOI. We're working now on a definitive agreement. Um, but again, you know, we're going to have not only better access um, to very, very large quantities of acetylene, we should actually also see a benefit to our production process with approved flow rates and also higher purity. So I think that um, all things considered, this is not only an exciting time for the company moving to a place that is going to have better access to engineering talent, but also a very, very strong indication to companies that we're working with worldwide that we will be able to satisfy their production or their um, demands within the contracts that we're negotiating now. So I do believe that you mentioned we had some questions in the queue. Um, I, I do have a, a couple things to say regarding upcoming catalysts and contracts, but why don't we start with the questions and I'll likely get back to them. Okay, sounds good. Let's see. Um, so when will you sign its first contract to supply graphene to a company you're currently working with? Our viewer, Ryan, wants to know. I figured most of the questions would be in this area. So we yeah. are working on, um, of course, a number of opportunities. The customer pipeline is now over 60 customers. There is um, something that we've been working on um, that we should have out really within the next month. Um, the larger contracts are likely going to be coming in towards the end of the year. And just as a reminder for everyone watching, we're really working with 18-month development cycles. Uh, we had the change in management that put me in as CEO um, just in March of last year. So a number of these projects that we initiated last year are going to start coming to completion within the next six months, within the next year. So we are getting very, very close with a lot of these larger opportunities. And if it reassures the viewers as well, um, we have passed our, our, will, our well within the industrial uh, scale-up phase with a number of the companies that we're working with. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, CRC asks, uh, an Australian company produces synthetic graphene using natural gas, methane. Is this a competitor? And does Hydrograph's patent extend to methane? It does. So we're the only company that can explode hydrocarbon gases for the production of graphene. Um, we don't prefer methane. We feel that acetylene is really what gives us the quality that we're known for and the consistency that we're known for. Um, with that said, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're indicating um, GMG. I think they've done a, a great job, I think, in their commercial journey. Um, I don't really see other graphene companies as competitors. I think really what we're looking towards is... Um, you know, adding graphene into legacy materials. And the more that we can educate the industry and really, um, you know, the market as a whole, that graphene is going to be a dominant player, um, I think it's going to be better for everyone. There's certainly enough room to grow for all of these companies. And who are Hydrograph's major shareholders? So we are um, sub-institutional, um, so overwhelmingly retail-backed. But I think, um, you know, we've mentioned on um, numerous public channels, we've had overwhelming support from Haywood Securities outside of um, Vancouver and Power One Capital Markets. They helped us list on the CSE, and they've really supported us to date. A few questions from Troy. Where does Hydrograph see revenues in 2026? 2026. Um, so we do. We are certainly expecting more than 10 million, I would say, in contracted revenue within 2026. 
And how many Hyperions do you plan to build in the near future? So there's a lot of nuance to this question. Um, we are planning in terms of space because we have to put a stake in the ground somewhere. And as I'm sure um, people are aware, this company could end up really taking off. We could be looking at a hockey stick. And so the initial plan that we have is to house 15 Hyperion reactors, but these would be next generation reactors with effectively double the production output of between 20 and 25 metric tons annually. And um, I'm, I'm indicating there's some nuance because we could get a customer contract in really this fall that would cause us to double or really triple that. So everything that we're building for the new Texas facility is going to be planned with expansion in mind. And do you have any automobile tire companies involved with your graphene? You know, we, we are working at, at least with one, to my knowledge. Okay. And is there any progress with Gulf Cryo partnership? No, we, um, that is effectively the same. That has been a little bit slower. And Arthur loves the company, asks, what are the team's key strategies for scaling graphene production? What are, what's your strategy? Um, well, again, you know, scalability is really built into the technology. So we're very lucky that we have a modular system. I really think that locating to Texas is a very um, critical piece of our strategy because with that um, additional supply, and again, we do believe that we've negotiated for pipeline access, we will be able to scale indefinitely. We'll have an engineering service company help us with procurement and assembly of everything that's non-confidential and anything that's related to a trade secret or that we want to keep in-house, we will produce, manufacture, and then we'll just complete the assembly internally. And the company's mentioned before it had a number of warrants in money as a source of additional growth capital without needing to go back to the market. Can you provide an update on that? Sure. So we did take in um, 2.2 million Canadian throughout the spring. Um, and that was associated with a warrant tranche that expired in April. We do have another tranche that's coming to Exbury at the end of uh, this September that uh, the Canadian dollar value would be about 3.3 million. So we are in, I would say, an advantageous position, but of course um, we could do more with more capital. We are looking at significant ramp ups, not only with production, um, but of course uh, general um, additions to the team. So I think um, you know, with the right terms. And if it's very clean, we could be open to looking at additional capital this year. Are there any updates on the state of commercialization? Um, I'm guessing that's going again back to contract. So yes, we are advancing uh, very rapidly with a number of the customers that we're speaking to. I would say that another um, key catalyst here is I'm sure viewers are aware that we've announced, you know, the NEI um, partnership that we have where it's effectively a drop-in solution for energy storage devices. We have uh, effectively the same type of partner um, uh, structure where we have a preferred compounding uh, program. So we start to work with compounders. They create these master batches for plastics industries. And there's a number of these that have moved forward quite rapidly. And that not only gives us access to their customer pipeline, but for example, each of their customers might have multiple products that they could immediately integrate us into. This is great, not only, of course, in expanding our network, but really rapidly decreasing that time to market. And can you give an update on the status of the FDA or EPA reviews? Sure. So um, just for a little bit of clarity, I guess on both. So FDA we would be the first graphene company to get approval for food contact. So we have to understand um, that there could be things that the FDA will continue to require because it's new. You know, it's not really as simple as something that already has a process, it already has a use. This is really a, a first time for a nanomaterial, especially a graphene in anything food contact. So what we have had happen is their standard test doesn't detect graphene. So we've had to go back and we're working with them to find a test that can ensure that that graphene particle, should it escape the plastic and be in a water or a soda, whatever it might be, that it's actually going to be detected. And this is a normal process. You know, I think everyone knows any government AG, agency, there's always that potential for it to take a little bit longer. So everything's come back very positively, but there are some additional steps. 
Um, and you know, with the EPA, there have been some reductions to certain government departments, and uh, we do believe that that has slowed it down a little bit. And I don't think that we're the only company that is um, facing those delays. Uh, but right. again, we don't believe there's any issue with our uh, submission. It's just current state of things. Well, uh, I'll give you about 30 seconds, closing remarks for our viewers today. Sure. So again, you know, this is really, we believe, our inflection point. Um, we have, again, a number of upcoming catalysts. We are growing very, very quickly. Our customer pipeline is expanding rapidly, and we are really um, solidly progressing through these development cycles. So I guess stay tuned because we do have quite a bit of upcoming news to start announcing throughout summer and certainly well into fall. So not only associated with customer or movements towards customer contracts, but also with our production scale up. Perfect. Well, thank you, Kirsten. We appreciate this update and we'll see you again real soon. Thank you. All right, everyone. We'll be right back.